All right, this is Thomas Keegan with blogtalkradio.com forward slash election channel, also libertarianprogressive.com, the real election channel. We cover everyone on the ballot. Right now we have Rob Sherman of the Green Party for the U.S. House in Illinois, District Number 5. He is going to be on the ballot. He has a Republican and Democrat challenger. We're going to give him a call here and do a quick interview and um, let you know your choices for Congress. We believe if a candidate has gathered enough signatures to be on the ballot and has a statistical chance to win, then they should be covered. Good afternoon. This is Rob Sherman. Hello. Hey, good afternoon, Rob. This is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com, the uh, real election channel. We cover everyone on the ballot. And uh, we're an independent media organization, sir. We interview independent third-party candidates who are on the ballot, Green Party, independents, libertarians, no party affiliation. We believe if a candidate has gathered enough signatures to be on the ballot, uh, a responsible media will include them in the debates and interview them. And so you're in Illinois running for in the district number five. Is that correct? As a Green Party candidate who's on the ballot, sir? Affirmative. That's pilot talk for yes. All right. All right. Well, over and out. And uh, so are you going to fly into victory this uh, November 8th and for a safe landing, sir? You know, let, let me ask you uh, uh, two silly questions. Uh, number one, uh, when you called about five minutes ago, I don't have my Dr. Daddy glasses on, so the print is small. Did you call from a Florida number before? Yep. I'm based out, we're based oh. out of Florida. Yeah, that's right. And now you're on a New York number. That's right. Now, I'm calling from the studio line. This is through blogtalkradio.com forward slash live. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And, and the other thing, you, you said that, uh, you know, since I got enough signatures to get on the ballot, uh, I uh, have earned myself a place uh, for an interview with your organization. And, and the reason that's kind of amusing is that uh, in Illinois, the Green Party is not an established party throughout the state but it is established in the 5th Congressional District. Uh, do you know how many signatures uh, people need to get on the ballot if you're an independent or a third-party guy? And uh, How many signatures you need to get in Illinois? Well, please inform us. Absolutely. Yeah, we'd like well, to know. Well, if you're a candidate for Congress in Illinois and you're uh, a Democrat or a Republican, you need somewhere between uh, 400 and 600. If you're an independent or a third-party you need somewhere between 8,000 and 11,000 valid signatures. So for, uh, 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 for uh, to make sure you get the valid, you need like 15 to 20,000 signatures. Except in the 5th District where I ran, because uh, the Green Party is an established party, so I needed 12 signatures. Wow, I almost uh, spit my drink out there, Rob. That's unbelievable. I can't believe that is true um it, right. it's one well, half one percent of uh, of the number of uh uh, uh votes uh, that the uh, uh gubernatorial candidate for our party got in the last election i think it was like 2400 and since uh, we're an established party in the fifth district because we got more than five percent of the vote uh in 2014 for the fifth uh congress so the green party candidate for congress in the fifth district got more than five percent of the vote this time we need one half of one percent of what the governor candidate got, which was twenty four hundred. Multiply that by half of one percent, you get well. Well, that sounds worse than gerrymandering districts or something like that. But now let's get to the core of the issues. Um, you know, I'm sure you have a platform, um, you, you know, of issues that you're running on, and that's what I'd like to hear first. What are your main like? If you had to create a platform, can you please? Share with the audience here your platform, sir, your most important issues. I do have a platform, which you're welcome to read, at robsherman.com, R-O-B-S-H-E-R-M-A-N.com. Here are my top three issues. Issue number one is to stop America from becoming a socialist country. Uh, there are a lot of uh, former Bernie supporters and actually uh, quite a few uh, people in the Green Party uh, who want America to become a socialist country. Well, socialism is the worst economic system you could possibly have, and uh, uh, advertising your party as being a socialist party, that's political suicide. 
So my number one goal is to stop America from becoming a socialist country. Issue number two, secular government for all. I'm going to sponsor legislation that will remove God from the money. We're going to remove God from the Pledge of Allegiance because the federal government has long made it clear that uh, we can no longer tolerate bullying in this country. So why is the federal government sponsoring anti-atheist bullying? It's time for the government to stop bullying atheists. And while we're at the secular government for all, I'm going to sponsor legislation, federal legislation, to eliminate Christmas as a federal holiday. And you might think, oh, outrageous, how are you going to get elected doing that? Well, I've spoken to a lot of Christians, and actually they support the idea because I have sold the idea to them. They want to put Christ back into Christmas. Well, you can't do that. You can't make Christmas religious if the government is involved. If the government's involved, it's got to be bland, neutral, and secular. So by getting government out of the Christmas business, we can restore Christmas and return Christmas to the Christians so they can make it a religious holiday uh, for them instead of uh, the national gifting holiday for heathens like me. And the third uh, uh, of the three things is electoral reform. I want to mandate compact legislative districts so you don't end up with the kind of gerrymandering that you have here in Illinois and surely in uh, many, if not most, other states. Uh, I want the legislative districts to be compact, and also I want, uh, I will sponsor legislation to require that all candidates for a particular office are required to get the same number of nominating petition signatures instead of one relatively low number for Democrats and Republicans and a, an unattainably high number for independents and third parties. Those are my top three issues. Awesome, and that sounds like um, you know something to build a consensus on. Would you support uh, an election day holiday? No, I don't think it's necessary anymore. And let me add one more quick thing from the secular government. I'm going to eliminate the National Day of Prayer, too, for, for all those same reasons. But as far as a federal holiday, no, it's definitely not needed because most people nowadays do early voting. So uh, the people who vote on Election Day are just the leftovers that haven't gotten around to doing early voting. So we certainly don't need uh, a holiday on Election Day. And that's one other thing that, that's relevant to this, uh, the, the number one reason, the best reason to do early voting, I never again have to vote in a church because my local precinct polling place has been in a church. I'm Illinois' most prominent atheist of all time. Well, when you do early voting, you vote at the township office or at village hall. You don't have to vote in the church. This is a good thing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I don't see why more people don't, you know, mail in the ballots ahead of time and, you know, save themselves some time and energy, et cetera. Uh, now, how long have you been in the district that you've been in? And, um, yeah, how long have you been in district number five, Rob? Uh, I have uh, lived and worked in the area all of my life, all 63 years of my life. Uh, due to gerrymandering, extreme gerrymandering in Illinois, my home was, uh, since I've run for public office before, the uh, uh, chairman of the Illinois Democratic Party who wrote the uh, 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 legislative maps, uh, he ran a little narrow strip a mile wide and 10 miles long uh, from another faraway district and then made a right turn, a 90-degree turn to the right, and, and the, another strip about a mile wide and four miles long to grab my house and put it in a faraway district where nobody knows me and I don't know anybody. The U.S. Constitution protects congressional candidates from that type of a scam, that type of gerrymandering scam, by saying that uh, uh, candidates for Congress must be a resident of the state in which they're running, but you don't have to be a resident of the district uh, to protect us against this kind of gerrymandering. So I'm very, very relevant to the 5th District, even though my house is slightly outside of the 5th District due to gerrymandering. Yeah, that's true. And uh, now, may I ask you, um, and I don't have this particular question, but I'm sure a lot of people would want to know, why 
did you decide to run as a Green Party candidate instead of, you know, the Republican or Democrats? I'm a retired radio talk show host. Ten years ago, I had the Green Party candidate for governor and lieutenant governor uh, as a guest on my morning drive radio talk show. And I realized after uh, uh, listening to them that I was in the wrong party when I was in the Democratic Party. What I really should do is become part of the Green Party. So I've been with the Green Party for 10 years. I was the chairman of the Cook County Green Party. Chicago is the biggest city in Cook County. Uh, and uh, so I've been with the Green Party for 10 years. That's why I'm with the Green Party. Uh, the Green Party is uh, uh, environmentally sensitive. Uh, we don't take corporate contributions. So our constituency is the voters, not the corporations who donate the, uh, thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy your uh, influence, uh, to buy influence with the congressman. All right. Now, Rob, if you don't mind, I wouldn't mind going down like a list. I have about 10 questions here or 10 issues and just like to hear your thoughts on uh, each one here, if that's all right. Um, all right. So we'll start with accountability and transparency. What thoughts come to your mind when you hear accountability, transparency? There should be maximum accountability and maximum transparency. I could elaborate, but I think that makes the point real clear. All right, great. And the next one is the justice system. Our court system is a house of fraud. The facts, the law, and the Constitution don't make one iota of difference in court. What matters is, are you friends with the judge? Is your attorney, that's even more important, is your attorney uh, friends with the judge or is the opponent's attorney friends with the judge? What is the political persuasion of the judge? Uh, because the judge is there, the judge isn't there to dispense justice. The judge is there to advance his personal political agenda. So, uh, and, and it's demonstrated by what happened to Merrick uh, uh, Garland of uh, uh, Barack's uh, uh, latest Supreme Court nomination. Uh, Merrick, who uh, grew up uh, uh, literally down the block, maybe a couple miles away. Uh, but so I'm, I'm from the same culture as Merrick and from the same general community as, as he is. Uh, he's probably the, the most highly qualified nominee for the Supreme Court of all time. He can't even get a hearing because of uh, the uh, uh, Republican Party has made it clear that their, not only their top priority, their only priority when it comes to who should be a judge is politics. So since politics is the only priority, uh, the, the Supreme Court and the lower federal courts and the state courts, too, for that matter, they have zero credibility. Nobody should take seriously anything that our courts say and do. It's all based on politics and, who, and uh, whether uh, your attorney or the opposing attorney is friends with the judge. All right. And uh, now the next topic we'd like to hear some of your thoughts on is small and mid-sized businesses. I own a small business. I have an airplane construction business. I build kit airplanes. I have a builder's assist center for builders of kit airplanes. Uh, so uh, uh, these are two-seat airplanes that fly all over the country. They're, they're not like little model airplanes. These are real airplanes that people fly in, uh, airplanes like the one that I fly in all over the country. Uh, I help people build airplanes, and so I'm a great advocate of small business and also medium-sized businesses, uh, large businesses are good too, but uh, you know, that's why I'm opposed to socialism. With, with socialism, it, uh, well, well let, me, let me go back one step. With capitalism, uh, getting it right is what matters. With socialism, it's whether you try. And if you try, you get paid. If you fail, you get paid. So there's no incentive to making sure that you get it right. Uh, with capitalism, you get paid for results. With socialism, you get paid. So I'm yeah. for capital, I'm for small business and uh, medium business, as well as large business. So it sounds like you probably would have been against the bailouts in 2008, right? Um, and so um, now next topic is uh, military spending and uh, foreign policy. I'm glad you asked me about military spending because I have long felt that uh, it's okay for our 
armed forces to intervene in behalf of other countries, but the other countries ought to be paying the cost. The other countries ought to be paying the salaries of our soldiers and paying the operating expenses for our uh, participation and intervention in behalf of their country instead of our taxpayers in this country getting stuck with the bill for subsidizing the you know, uh, uh, military uh, support of, uh, for other countries. All right. And, um, yeah, like in uh, Germany and South Korea and lots of other places, Saudi Arabia. Um, so what about free and yeah. fair trade? I don't know what the question is. I didn't hear you. Yeah, what are your thoughts on um, free and fair trade with other countries? Here's what I think we ought to do. I think we ought to, and, and this is relevant to, you, to your question. What we need to do in this country is eliminate the income tax system and replace it with a consumption tax because that way we would eliminate the tax on labor and uh, uh, instead of uh, uh, products coming in from other countries where they have uh, a lower tax rate so the cost of production is lower, we need to lower the cost of production here at home by eliminating the, uh, uh, the labor tax, the income tax, and that would uh, similarly, by putting consumption tax, that would place a higher tax on imports. So we could do a lot for uh, the you know, balance of trade deficit. Uh, we could do a lot for exports in the country, and we could do a lot to uh, minimize imports. Not that imports is a bad thing, but to, to make it more of a level playing field if we were to eliminate the uh, income tax, which only affects products produced in this country, and instead use a consumption tax, so no matter where the products are produced, they're taxed the same. All right. All right. Great. And uh, how about just in general, civil liberties, civil rights? I'm the most prominent atheist in the history of Illinois. I have uh, the, the slogan for Rob Sherman advocacy is fighting injustice one victory at a time. I have won more state church separation battles in this country than the, uh, just about anybody else in the history of America, maybe more than anybody else in the history of America, because we've had a lot of state church separation violations in Illinois that I have successfully challenged. But I've also been involved in challenging uh, other injustices. Uh, Ten years ago, when I ran for state representative in Illinois, uh, I had a, uh, uh, a proposal for a, uh, uh, a family, let's see, uh, a defensive family uh, amendment or a defensive family law. You, you've heard of the uh, Defensive Marriage Act uh, where, uh, from, from a few years ago where uh, uh, it was uh, the right wing, uh, the, the, the uh, radical, uh, the, the crazy right wingers uh, wanted to define marriage as uh, 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 but only between a man and a woman, I was proposing a Defense of Family Act which says that any unmarried adult can marry any other willing, unmarried, and unrelated adult because that's your family. So I have been a long proponent, and, and now uh, thanks to both uh, Illinois state law and the Supreme Court from, uh, from about a year ago, uh, uh, any that, that's basically the national policy now. My proposal from 10 years ago is national policy. Uh, I've also uh, fought injustice uh, in regards to uh, uh, black people and other minorities, but what I, and women too. But what I found is that most minority groups, uh, women, blacks, gay people, they want their own people fighting their battle. They don't want uh, Rob Sherman doing it. So I support, but I am a strong supporter and advocate uh, and activist for social justice and civil rights. All right, sir. Let me just ask one more question on, on that um, in a different angle here. What about um, privacy versus security, that debate? Privacy comes first. All right. and um, now, I, I don't want the government spying on me or spying on other people uh, by claiming, oh, we're doing it for security because that opens the door 
for the government to claim that any spying that it does on its political opponents, oh, we're doing it for security reasons. Yeah, right. So we, we need to get rid of that scam by you know, politicians to spy on their opponents uh, by claiming we're doing it for security. All right, sir. And uh, who's some of your favorite past or present people elected or not and why? Favorite uh, elected people, past or present? Right. Uh, th- there, are, there are a lot of them, but uh, yeah. I, I suppose my favorites would be uh, all of the Democratic presidents and none, none right. of the Republicans. Okay. And now, how about a pitch to, you know, because um, the Democrats and the Republicans and the independents in your district, uh, what would be the pitch to the people on the opposite side of the aisle that you're running to represent, sir? What do you mean by the opposite side of the aisle? Because I'm the Green Party. Uh, both sides what? of the aisle are the opposite sides of the aisle. Right, right, right. So I mean both of them. What, what would be your pitch to Republicans? What would be your pitch to Democrats? Regarding to what? To vote for you. To vote for you, to support you oh, instead of the status I, quo. Oh, okay. So what is my pitch to Democrats and Republicans for why they should vote for me? I was yes. asked that. You'll love this answer. I was asked that uh, last week on Friday, uh, which would be uh, September 9th, uh, in case uh, this is playing uh, you know, at, at some point in the future. I went to the interview by the Chicago Sun-Times, which as uh, many of you know, is the second largest newspaper in Illinois. They asked me during my candidate endorsement interview, why should people vote for Rob Sherman of the Green Party? And I said for the same reason that the people, you know, it, it's the same question as why should people read the Chicago Sun-Times when they could be reading the Chicago Tribune or uh, getting their news from CNN. What you want is the best source. So I, you know, while I'm sitting in the Sun-Times newsroom, I suggest they're the best newspaper. That's why people should read paper. But similarly, vote for me because I'm the best candidate. Vote for me. Be, you know, take a look at RobSherman.com. Take a look at my agenda. If you support my agenda, you should vote for me. And maybe I'll win, but even if I don't, by receiving a lot of votes, I can then go to whoever it is that does win and say, hey, I received a lot of votes because of my agenda. I'd like to go over my agenda with you to see which, if any, of these agenda items you might find has merit, and you can carry the ball on the, uh, the cafeteria menu uh, thing, you know, pick and choose uh, items off of my agenda that you can uh, support and uh, advocate for, even if you don't uh, support all of my agenda items. All right, excellent. And I do see a good consensus on your issues, especially like uh, the national sales tax, getting rid of the IRS. I think that would be great for small businesses. In regards to that, do you support the um, the, the version of this national sales tax where people would get like a voucher or something? Um, y- y- do you know what I mean by that? Uh, I, I have a general idea. Here, here, Let me answer your question in this way. I would have to see proposed legislation and then uh, consider uh, the the different proposals, uh, listen to the experts, listen to the citizens, what do they like, what do they want, what should we include in the bill, and craft a bill that way. But uh, you mentioned uh, that small businesses would like it. One of the great reasons for uh, uh, a national consumption tax a uh, national sales tax instead of an income tax, is that uh, all of us, not just small business people, all of us, it seems, who are, who are making money, we spend half our lives trying to keep track of uh, uh, what our tax liability is, and the other half of our, uh, our lives trying to figure out how to uh, find ways to evade <laughs> and dodge uh, tax liability. So instead of wasting all that time and all of that money on accountants, I love you, accountants, but uh, <laughs> you know, let's, let's get rid of uh, the income tax anyway. Uh, instead of spending all that time and money on accountants and all that time trying to figure out uh, what is the legitimate amount that we owe and, and doing uh, uh, doing tricks like uh, 
you know, whether it's selling assets uh, based on time rather than uh, how much it's, uh, how long, uh, whether or how much it's, it's uh, uh, increased in value, uh, you know, let, let's get rid of all the games and all the tricks uh, and all the deductions. Uh, you have a national sales tax like they do in the Cayman Islands. The, the three things I like about the Cayman Islands, no sales, uh, uh, they, they have no income tax, no property tax, and no winter. Yay! <laughs> so let's, let's yeah, get no rid of property tax would be another good one. Here in Florida, we don't have a state income tax. We just have a national, I mean, a state sales tax. There's a couple other states like that as well. Actually, I work for a tax, uh, you know, preparation company, and um, I, I would have to advocate a national consumption or sales tax as well. I think that would be a big burden off the country. Well, uh, good to talk to you today, Rob. We certainly wish you all the best um, and, uh, you know, to build that consensus. I think congressional elections are a little less divisive than presidential politics, so hopefully you can gather some uh, consensus there and and best wishes. Do you have any final closing uh, words of wisdom here for our audience? Uh, two things. If you're not busy on the evening of January 3rd, please come to my inauguration party. It's going to be in Washington, D.C. <laughs> and the other thing, uh, you know, I've asked you for your vote if you're in Illinois. If you're not in Illinois, you can still vote for me because I'm running in the Chicago area, and here's how it works in the Chicago area. If you want to vote for me, that's great. That's fine. You can vote for me. But if you don't live in Illinois and you want to vote for my opponent, hey, what are you doing trying to vote for my opponent? You don't live here. So, so anybody can vote for me, but uh, uh, only people who uh, 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 live uh, in, uh, in, in the district can vote for my opponent. Yeah, just following up on that, when I was doing some research on who's running in Illinois, you're the only independent or third-party candidate that's running, that's on the ballot for Congress. So regardless of, you know, if, if you want to see more third-party and independent candidates to break that paradigm of the status quo, I mean, you're going to affect legislation that's going to affect the entire country. So people might have, you know, um, an interest in looking into your candidacy and, uh that is Rob Sherman, is robsherman.com, right? And um, so definitely you are not people. correct about You are not correct about what you said. Paula Bradshaw yeah. is the Green Party candidate for Congress in the 12th District of Illinois okay. in southern Illinois. That's the Carbondale area. Okay, so besides her, then you're the only other one. And, yes, I have um, uh, interviewed her like four years ago. So, yeah, we'll have to give her a call. Well, good to talk to you, Rob, and um, – Best wishes, and thanks for taking the time out to, uh, you know, inform our audience here about their choices. We appreciate it very much. Call anytime and, and come to the inauguration party on January 3rd in Washington. All right. we Will do. And, um, well, uh, good to talk to you today, sir. Thanks for your time. Thanks. Bye-bye.